God. Hallelujah. Welcome to Walking Closely with God. Happy holiday seasons to you and your family. Amen. For the past several weeks, I've been teaching on the topic that I may know him. Amen. And uh, the title for today's message is Come Up Hither. Come Up Hither. And our Bible reading is taken from the book of Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. I'll be reading from the King James Version, and it does read, After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. I will show you things that is going to happen I will give you revelations. I will give you secret. I will open your eyes to the deep and hidden things. But it takes you coming up higher. It takes you living a life above earthly realm, carnal realm, above the things of flesh. It takes you coming up higher. Amen. The voice is loud. It's a voice like a trumpet that says, come up higher. But we cannot hear it even as loud as it is because of every other distracting worldly canal and earthly noises around us. And if we cannot hear the voice of God, how can we hear him asking us to come up here to show us things that are going to be hereafter? How can we hear him telling us what he has for us in 2024? How can we hear what directions he is showing and giving to us for 2024? How can we hear what his mandates, his agenda, his purposes are for us in 2024? How can we hear what are the things he plans to use our lives to accomplish according to his will in the year 2024. How can we hear? The only way we can hear is when we come up higher. So 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 tells us, he said, the Lord knows who are his and everyone who names the name of the Lord is to depart from carnal things earthly things, worldly things, those things that are contrary to the will and to the ways of God. Amen. That is what God is saying in the, in, in the scripture we just read. God's standard is high and we must come up to it. God is not going to change his standard for anybody because the Bible tells us, it says the foundation of the Lord's standard sure. The foundation of the Lord standard sure, and he's not going to change it. He's not going to lower it to accommodate anybody. But it is our responsibility as children of God to come up higher. There are a lot of things God has stored up for us for 2024. As a matter of fact, you can write this down. You can go write it down. 2024 is going to be a banner year. It's going to be a year of great manifestations of God. But it's going to be for children and not for the Those who don't have a walk with God. It's going to be for the children. For the children. For the children. You can write it down. It's going to be a glorious year. It's going to be a year of manifestation. Marvelous manifestations of God's faithfulness. A year that people that have true relationship. True intimacy with God. Will partake of great and mighty things in their lives. It will be a year of restoration with compensation. It will be a year of breakthrough, open doors, growth, increase, healing. A year of blessings, things you've the seeds you've been sowing all this time. The year 2024 is going to be a year when you begin to harvest and your bands will be filled to overflowing. You won't even have room to contain them. And this is why the Lord has been leading me for the past several weeks to teach on that I may know him, to come up higher with God, to have deeper work with God, daily fellowship with God, build up intimacy with God because of everything he has has planned and stored up for 2024. It's going to be a year that 
those that don't have relationship or have a deep work with, with God will just be spectators. They will see things happening in the lives of others and they'll be wondering, what's going on? Why am I being left out? So God is calling us to come up higher so that he will show to us things that will be hereafter. And it is going to be in the year 2024 moving forward. you start to see it. Amen. He said, listen, I said before you a blessing and a curse. I said before you life and death. Therefore, choose life that it may be well for you and your descendants, your family, your business, your career, your marriage, your home, your children in the year 2024 moving forward, moving forward that you may enjoy all of his goodness. A deeper fellowship is the requirement. It is the requirement. God wants intimacy with us. When the Syrophoenician woman came to Jesus, Jesus said, I cannot give you what belongs to the children. They are for the children, not for you. You are not a child. But the woman continued begging. But that will not be in 2024. The Lord's standard standard sure. And he's not going to change his standard for anybody. It is now up to you to come up higher. Amen. So Psalm 11 verse 7 tells us. He said, for the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. What is God's countenance? Everything that God is, is his countenance. His goodness, his healing, his blessings, his faithfulness, his mercy, his good, his everything, his glory, his honor, breakthrough, healing, restoration, peace, joy, everything you need for life is God's countenance. That is why he instructed Moses, say unto Aaron, pronounce the blessing upon the children. The Lord bless thee. The Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Lift up his countenance. His countenance. That is everything that consists of God. is his countenance. And he's saying, the Lord Dot behold, that is, he indwells, he surrounds, he beautifies, he decorates, he keeps the righteous one, those in upright standing with him. He does that with his countenance in their lives. For he said, No good thing will I withhold for them that walk in uprightness before me. So, my brother and my sister, you need to come up higher. You need to come up higher. You, there's no two way about it. You need to come. He said, come up here that I may show you these things that will be hereafter. The key is coming up higher, being aligned with God, in sync with God. And then you see God doing great and mighty things for you. Jesus came to restore us to our original position after the fall of man. To the heavenly places. So he said we are raised together to sit in heavenly places in him, Christ Jesus. Why? Because the eyes of our understanding has been what? Enlightened to know the revelational, to have revelational knowledge of God. And when we have revelational knowledge of God, we begin to walk in the same power that raised Jesus from the dead to do exploit for our lives and for the kingdom of God here on earth. So God now tells us, he said in Psalm 82 verse 6, I have said ye are gods, all of you the children of the most high. So for you to operate as a mini God here on earth, you need to come up higher. You need to come up higher because the God of heaven and earth, he is the one that made the heaven and earth. He is the God of the heavens, but the earth has he given to sons of men. And for you to operate as a God on earth here, you need to be in heavenly places, operating from heavenly places on this earth realm. Moses ran from Pharaoh as a fugitive, but when he returned back to Pharaoh, he returned what? As a guard unto Pharaoh. He returned 
as a guard because he had an encounter. And that encounter changed the old man into the new creature that God now made to be a guard before Pharaoh. And this is exactly what God is saying to us. I want to make you a guard over your circumstances, over your situation, over your career, over earthly realm. I want to make you a guard. But you need to come up here, come up here that I may show you, that I may begin to release into your life, that I may begin to impact Part you and use you to make impact that I may begin to anoint you for greatness, that I may begin to release my blessing in your life to be a blessing, that I may begin to use you for miracles, signs, and wonders on earth. Here, but you must come up higher, and there is a price to coming up higher. It is in Galatians 2:20. I have been crucified with Christ, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I live now in the flesh, I live it by faith through the son of God, the one who loved me and died for me, gave up himself for me so that I can be raised together with him in heavenly places where I have a position of authority, of dominion, of power. For I have been given power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and upon all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by no means harm me. This sign shall follow them that believe that in my name, because they are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, they will cast that devil, they will heal the sick, they will speak to the mountain, be thy removed and cast into the sea, and don't, do not doubt, and it shall be so for them. Why? Because they have made that decision to come up higher and be seated daily in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But unfortunately, this is not the case as we see all around us. Man wants to self-govern. Man wants to be in control. Man wants to gratify the carnal man. Man wants to have his own way. Man wants to operate by his own mindset, not by the mind of Christ. Man, as long as he's not yielded and humbled before the mighty hand of God, then the hands of God are tied concerning the lives of that man. Because man has chose to go his own way. He chose to go his own way. Amen. And man in a fallen state cannot operate in the status of a God here on earth. Satan will just mess you up. Satan will continue to steal, kill, and destroy in the life of a man that is not yielded unto God. And for you not to be yielded to God, then that means God is resisting and opposing you. Because he says so. A proud one is that one that refuses uses to allow God rule and reign in his life. And the Bible says the Lord resists the and opposes the proud. But to the humble, he gives grace. And in due season, God says, I will exalt and honor you. And I tell you, my brother and my sister, 2024 is that year of due season. 2024 is that year of due season. So if you now choose to what? Humble yourself be in good standing with God, God will reward you with his presence. He will give you deep revelational knowledge. He will give you secrets to, he said, the hidden riches and the treasures in the dark places of the earth. God will give you direction and a roadmap to them only from the fact that you need to come up here so that I may show you these things that shall be hereafter. So, my brother, my sister, he reiterated the same thing. God reiterated the same thing to us. In Luke 12, 32, he said, Fear not, little flocks, for it is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What a tremendous promise. It is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Do you know how tremendous that promise is? He said unto Peter, See, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Matthew 16. I give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you losing on earth is losing in heaven. And we know the church as we know it today is built on Peter. Peter that walked on the street, just his shadow healed people. Peter preached a sermon 
3,000 people gave their life to Christ. Another sermon, 5,000 people received salvation. Peter took the hand of the lame man at the beautiful gate. He raised him up, a man that had been crippled all his life. That is what God wants to do with you and with me. If only we are willing to come up here. If only we are willing to put away everything that is carnal. God wants to use us for great manifestation. Unfortunately, we just see believers struggling. Meanwhile, there is a version of them that is supposed to be mighty men of valor. Mighty men that brings down Goliath. Mighty men that speaks to Pharaoh. Let my people go. Mighty men that are supposed to be kings. Kings. Kings speaking ah, and giving authority, giving dominion, giving power to legislate, to reign and to rule on this earth ring. These are people that are supposed to be the David of this, of this generation, the Daniels of this generation, the Josephs of this generation, the Abrahams, the Isaacs, the Jacobs, the Israels of this generation. But the enemy is just tossing them back and forth like a rag door because they don't know who they are in Christ. They don't want to yield and let God have his way in their life. They don't want to pay the price and live for God. Unfortunately, Satan is just stealing, killing, and destroying things in their lives, which is so sad. And because of this, Jesus is weeping. The Father is weeping. The Father sees people that he had created to reign, to rule, to be head and not the tail, to be above and not beneath, to be CEOs, to be politicians that are enacting policies that will bless people, to be uh, in leaders of industries, making 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 impact in the marketplace people that are supposed to be head of businesses head of companies you see them they are just struggling trying to make ends meet and it just it grieves the father it grieves the father just seeing these people he said before i formed thee i knew thee and when god that all he wants for you is good. When he says to you, before I formed thee, I knew thee, and I created you. I created you to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. To what? To be blessed and what? To walk in multiplication. Then if that same God sees you just struggling through life, of course it grieves him. Of course it's not happy. Amen. Of course, he's not happy. That is why Jesus tells us that uh, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. The marvelous works of God. We are beautifully and fearfully made. So Jesus told us, he said, listen, we cannot operate in this earth from the earthly realm. We need to operate in this earth from the heavenly realm. That is, we need to be ambassadors of heaven on earth. He says so in John 3, 13. He said, no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. So, as an ambassador, you operate carrying out the agenda, the assignment, the mandate of the home country in your present place of residency. We are here on earth, but we are not of this earth. We are of heaven. And so we need to operate from heavenly realm, carrying out the mandate, the purposes, the agenda, the will of God here on earth. He said, thy thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are to bring the kingdom down, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give the kingdom to his children, little children. It is his pleasure. So he wants his kingdom come established on earth here by your lifestyle, by your choices, by you walking higher in a deeper and 
intimate relationship with him, then he can give you secret. Then he can reveal things to you. Then he can show you. Herein is the way. Walk ye in it. And then when you walk in it, you start to walk in the path of blessings, in the path of glory, of honor, where you now become a thing of joy unto your generation in the name of Jesus Christ. He said concerning Job, have you considered my servant Job? more honorable. He said concerning Jabez, have you considered he's more honorable than all his brethren? And these people, they walked in God's blessings. Have you seen my servant Abraham? I know he would teach his household concerning my ways. Shall I do anything without telling my friend Abraham? That is how God wants to relate with us because we are gods on earth here. So I pray for you, my brother and my sister, you will make that decision to come up higher. Amen. As for you that don't have a relationship with God, I want to invite you to an authentic one-on-one relationship. Please repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life, my will. I confess of my sins. I repent of them. I ask you, please have mercy. Forgive me. Write my name in your book of life and sit from today at the throne of my heart as my Lord and over my life as my Savior. Ah, with your countenance beholding me in Jesus name. If you have made that declaration and welcome into the kingdom of God, the next thing you want to do, get yourself a Bible, join a Bible believing church where they will teach you the ways and the word of God. And when you walk in the word of God, in the ways of God, then the kingdom is yours, my brother and my sister. As for us, Open Way Church, we are virtual. You can check us out on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is Open Way Church. And our Facebook page is Open Way Church Bridgeland. Every Monday, every Wednesdays, we have apostolic bedtime prayer fellowship, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. We are praying into the new year. Join us and you see the new year. That is a banner year. It will be a glorious year for you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you as you make that adjustment. May you begin to see the hand of God upon your life in this holiday season, I pray concerning you and your family, the end of the year tragedy will not be your portion. You will not mourn. You will not be sorrowful. You will not cry bitter tears as this year is coming to an end. But rather, he said, none of them were feeble when they left the land. They walked with their hands lifted up in triumph out of Egypt. Out of 2023, you will walk with your hands lifted up in triumph, celebrating, jubilating and testifying of God's goodness. Amen. God bless you tremendously. May you begin to see great and mighty things as you begin to make that adjustment to say, Lord, I am done living for myself. I want you now to have your way in my life. Take absolute control. Reign and rule in my life. Do as you choose and as you will. And when you do that, he said, I would what? I will give you all that you need for life and for godliness. And it will be my good pleasure, my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And then walking with the power, the surpassing power, the surpassing power that raised Jesus that is made available to us believers where we begin to do exploits, great things for the kingdom of God, where we are blessing, we're taking God's purpose and mandate to the ends of the earth and we see God rejoicing and bragging about us like he did about Job and about Abraham and Jabez. It is well with you. God bless you. We love you, but Jesus loves you more. Shalom. I'll be with you again next week. Again, happy holidays to you and your family. God bless.